He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be what? An abomination. The Bible has abominations and it has sins. Now they're all sins, but an abomination is an intense sin. Without offending anyone, let me give you an example. A man and a woman coming together for physical relations who are not married, that is sin in the eyes of God. And if not confessed, will result in the loss of the soul. But a man and a man coming together, that is also sin, but that's a step further. That is abomination because it goes contrary to the laws of nature. The man and the woman outside of marriage, yes, is sin, but as still, it is still a natural act. Are you following what I'm saying? It is sin, but a natural act. It is sin. But a man and a ma man, a woman and a woman, a man and an animal, that is abomination. Now, keep this in mind, listen to Proverbs 28, 9. He that turneth away his ear, not someone who's ignorant, someone who says, don't tell me, I don't want to know, I couldn't care less. He or she who does that, even that person's prayer shall be an abomination in the eyes of God. And some of us in church, we practice that. As I said earlier, we know there's some things we ought to do, things we ought to make right, sins to forgive, uh, sins to apologize for, and we absolutely refuse. But we go to God in prayer, and our prayers arise before God as a stench in his nostrils. He that turneth away his ear. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 5, the Bible says, For this they willingly are ignorant of. Many years ago, I was conducting an evangelistic series in the city of Detroit close to where I live. That's my home airport. Three weeks we met every night. This lady came the first week. And she came, she was blessed. Then I did not see her at the beginning of week number two. So I called her on her job and I said, sister, whomever, I didn't see you. You know what she said to me? She said, Elder Skeet, I cannot keep coming. Because if I keep coming and sit under that preaching, I will have to make a decision. So I am not coming back. Now that's honesty you must respect. But that's a well-spoken form of self-destruction. I am not coming back because if I do, that word will cause me to make a decision. And I'm not ready for that based on where I am in my life. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law because for often in the bible the word law does not only mean the ten commandments it means the revealed will of god he that turneth away his ear you know you ought to return a tithe and you do not this text does not embrace those who are ignorant Acts 17 verse 30 and the times of this ignorance God winked at John 15 22 if I had not come and spoken unto them they had not had sin we are talking about those who deliberately do not want to know in the eyes of God ignorance must have two qualities quality number one I did not know quality number two I had no way of knowing that is ignorance in God's eyes this does not qualify for those in 2nd Peter 3 5 for this they willingly are ignorant of it does not cover the arrogant ones in proverbs 28 9 he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law the will of god even his prayer shall be abomination there are some people who tell you don't tell me anything about the health message i like my meat don't bother me with the health message i like my meat Someone was talking to me some while ago about an elder in some church. And the elder said, someone had preached on health. The elder of the church said, no one will take my meat from me. Well, fine. <laughs> no one will take my meat from me now. Biblically, how you eat affects your character. 
It is not by accident that the very first victory Christ won was a victory over appetite. What he would consume, of course, he avoided food. His victory was over appetite. The first Adam fell on the very same point. This is not accidental. It is not accidental that Daniel begins with a story on diet. This elder said, no one will take my meat from me. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. There is always but. Let me pray again. Father, continue to instruct me in what to say and how to say it and when. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We sabotage our own prayers. It's not God. God is a God who sent Christ surely is willing to give you tuition but how do you compare Christ if God will give me Christ why wouldn't he give me tuition are you following me if Christ if God will send Christ someone equal with himself the creator and sustainer of heaven and earth why would he not heal a, a cold or whatever but there's always a but Psalm 66 verse 18 go there with me Psalm 66 Verse 18. Psalm, by the way, I recommended John. I also recommend Psalms. If you want to experience the full range of human emotions, read the Psalms. Read the Psalms. You see the humanity of those who wrote the Psalms. Most were written by David, but other people wrote some. Same with Proverbs. Solomon wrote most other people wrote. Psalm 66, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, Finish the verse. The Lord will not hear me. Now what does that mean? If I, not if I commit outwardly sin, if I regard iniquity. Let me give an example. There are some people who say, I have no problem with people who smoke occasionally. Now I don't smoke. But I have no problem with those who do from time to time on your birthday and Thanksgiving and Valentine's Day. That's fine. You are regarding iniquity in your heart. I have no problem with uh, those who go to the games on Sabbath and go fishing on Sabbath and go snorkeling on Sabbath. I, I have no problem. I don't do it, but I have no problem. You don't have to do it. To be classified as part of it. I didn't say that clearly. Let me try to clarify by using the Bible. In Matthew 23, Jesus condemns the scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You, get, you build the tomb of the prophets, of the, the saints, and garnish the, the chapel of the prophets. And you say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. He's, they're saying, we didn't live back then, we didn't do it. Jesus says, fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. In other words, you are as guilty as they are, even though you did not do it. Because their attitude towards Old Testament prophets is your attitude towards me, and I'm a prophet. This is a very serious uh, concept. You do not have to physically commit the murder for God to regard you as a murderer. You simply have to have the same mindset. You regard murder in your heart or I. And so the Bible says, He, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So you can pray and fast and ask other people to pray for you, but there is a blockage. There's a blockage preventing the transmission of God's goodness to you and your prayer to God. Why? That's sin. There is always but.